I want to thank our television audience for joining us. You're watching one of the first national broadcasts on this station from the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. This is a Thursday night. Normally on Thursday night we teach, but tonight's going to be a teach-preach night because uh, the men's conference has commandeered our normal Thursday night Bible study. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us. Amen. Let's clap our hands for our audience tonight Amen. for joining us for our broadcast. Father, bless us now as we minister the word of the Lord. May we preach with power and authority and God release the anointing tonight on us to shift from where we are to where we need to be. Moving from one place in you to the next. Your word declares that we are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Father, we ask that you would develop us. Make us better men. Make us better husbands, better fathers, uh, better leaders in our communities. Oh, God, give us the strength to stand. Give us power not to be tripped up by the same old tricks of the enemy. Give us to move from one place to another in you. God, give us to recognize the opportunity that is set before us. And give us the wisdom to take advantage of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Allow me to open by saying that something that John G. Butler said concerning this. He says, when David was a fugitive from Saul, coming from 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 22. said, when David was a fugitive from Saul, a member a number, excuse me, of men came to join up with David. Many came when he was in the cave of Dulam. These men were a motley bunch and were described as those who were, let's look at the description of them, in distress, in debt, and discontented. But in following David, they became some of the greatest warriors in Israel's history. This message tonight should give you hope. It should tell you that you don't have to remain where you are. All of this is a picture of what happens when a person gives their life to Christ. When a person really wants to change, they may be a rascal. But under Christ, they can become a very changed person with noble character and achievements. Jesus can change you. Amen. Uh, there is a reality in serving the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you get saved and you move from the world to Christ, you don't just, you don't just change clothes. And you don't simply change company. You don't just change who you, who you hang out with. Jesus changes the heart. He changes our behavior. And not only is he able to change our behavior, but he's able to bless us in the area of achievement. You can do more and accomplish more in this world, in Christ, than you can without Christ. He changes you. Speaking of God just blessing a man and changing. God bless Elder Jude Abbott. So yes, good sir. to have you, my yes, brother. Sir. Amen. He's here uh, and uh, has his sons with them. And I want them Abbott boys to stand. God bless you. Both of you, look at them. Great big fellas. Amen. Oh, I'd like to have them on my football team, wouldn't you? Amen. If we look a little closer tonight at our text, we will see that when David was on the run from Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 22. It's interesting that his brothers and his father followed him. Verse 1 says, when his, <clears throat> when his brethren 
and all of his father's house heard it when they found out where he was. Because if you remember, for those of you who know your biblical history, David left Gath and went to the cave of Adullam. He was on the run from Saul. Running from Saul, he left uh, Bethlehem and ran down into enemy territory, Gath, in the home of Goliath, whom he had killed. While in the home of Goliath, Akish, king of Gath, one of them recognized David. So you're the guy who killed Goliath. You're the one that they sang about. Oh, we got you now. He's down there. He has, he's alone. He has, he has no army. He has no one to help him. He's caught. And, uh, and, and David pretended to be insane. Uh, he, and, and, and we talked about this the other Sunday. He was afraid. He was not acting. He was not, he was not acting uh, from his wits. He was terrified. And he called upon the Lord. And the Lord delivered him. Uh, as a matter of fact, to this action, to him pretending to be insane and, uh, and, and fooling Akish, a, a king of Gath, David wrote in Psalms, I think it's 34, where he says, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Isn't it amazing that you can be uh, in a jam, but if, if you follow God, he'll show you how to get out. But, but you have to be humble enough to behave the way he tells you. Lord says, start slobbering. I know, I know you're a mighty warrior. I know a few days ago they sung, Saul have killed thousands and you ten thousands. And I know you, you have conquered and, and you have been the captain over Saul's elite fighters. But being a, an elite warrior won't help you this time. Now there's a lesson in that. See, some of you, I know you're somebody out there. I know you have a nice job. I know you have a nice position. But there come a time when you come to church, that you got to, you got to forget all about that and get down, get on that altar and, and, and drop your titles, uh, forget about your bank account, forget about what prestige you think you may have and just call on the Lord. Amen. Uh, and like you have, like, like, like everything depends on it because the truth is everything does. Amen. It, it'll never work. It'll never work out. Without the Lord. Yes, sir. Oh my, if you were here uh, last Sunday and if you were in our 8 o'clock class, you heard me talk about the depravity of the human heart. Mm. Nothing is as deceitful as our own heart. Right. The heart is placed in man to be man's check. It is what keeps us in order. But if that which is in you to keep you in order becomes the ring leader in your deception, in deceiving you, you ain't big trouble. This is why the only person who knows the heart is not the possessor of the heart. Well, I know what's in my heart. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible says the heart is, this, uh, uh, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The question was asked, who can know it? Michael couldn't answer. Gabriel couldn't answer. Praise the Lord. The only, the, 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 the four beasts couldn't answer. Right. Only person who could answer was God himself. I, the Lord, know the heart. Right. I try the reins. See, so I don't know my heart and you don't know yours. This is why that when the Lord speaks to you and tells you what to do, you have to be willing to humble yourself and do it. David pretended to be mad. He pretended to be insane and the Lord delivered him. And then God said, now you better get out of here. And he left running and ran to the cave Adullam. He left Gath and ran back within Israeli territory, went up to, into the foothills of Adullam, still about 10 miles uh, southwest of Jerusalem, and he finds a cave and he hides out there. His family don't know where he is. 
Jesse don't know. His mother doesn't know. His brothers don't know. But when they find out where, when they found out where he was, I'm talking about the same brothers who embarrassed him when he was getting ready to fight Goliath. Praise the Lord. Same brothers who put him on front street. It's amazing how uh, when God, when the Holy Ghost get on you and, and how when the Lord give you a few victories, he can call those who've been criticizing you to see the value in you. When his brothers, when his family, when his dad, when the whole clan found out where David was, a marvelous thing took place. The whole family, and they had to do it by stealth. See, they couldn't just go to where David was because, you got to keep in mind, Saul is looking for him. So they had to make their way to him, but they had to cover their tracks in the process. So they find David, and there they are in this cave in uh, Adullam. Now, it was a smart move on behalf uh, of, his, of his family because um, uh, 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 perhaps they wanted to avoid royal reprisals from Saul. Since Saul knew that David was kin to them, you know how the devil is. If he can't get you, he'll try to get your family. Praise the Lord. So they, 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 they said, you know, it's better for us to leave. And, uh, and, and also that, that family unit, they had blood ties. And they knew that God had raised this young man up. And, and how the Lord had used him. And how he had defeated Goliath. And how he had been exalted as the captain over Saul's army. And he led Saul's elite fight, fighters. Now, by now, the royal robes that he used to wear are gone. The crown is gone. All of the niceties of living in the palace is gone. And he's now living in a cave, but the family still understood whether he had on a suit or was in the cave dirty, God's hand was on him. See, so you got to know how to recognize the anointing when you see it. Sometimes God can move all around us and everybody see that it's God but you. They still knew that there was something special about this man. But not only did they recognize his value, but there was a second group that found him. A group of losers. Are you with me? A group of people whom the only thing they had uh, in common was their troubles. This, this, was, this was no hallelujah group. This was no uh, he's going to bless us in the morning group. This was a motley crew, a combination of diverse clashing people. The Bible describes them as being men who were, praise the Lord, uh, distressed. In debt and discontented, stressed out, in debt, discontent, bitterness of soul. So they're, 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 they weren't attractive at all. And somehow or another, 400 of them got together. The text is not clear as to whether or not all 400 came at one time. But by the time they got there, 400 of them assemble themselves together. And uh, uh, even though they were in debt, distressed, and discontented, they had clearer sight. They had better vision than most of Israel because they recognized that even though David was not in the palace, even though David was on the run, even though David uh, was hiding out and that he was a fugitive, he was their best hope. And he was the sign of things to come. That God's hand was on him. And that their best chance at survival was to join him. Saul was the king, but they could see that God's hand was no longer on Saul. So there's no point in us staying with Saul because Saul has been rejected. Right. So, but David, David, David don't have an army. 
He doesn't have a palace. He don't have a kingdom. He doesn't have anything. Yes, he may not have anything, but he has someone. Praise the Lord. He, he has someone. He has the Lord God. He has something. He has the anointing of the Lord on his life. So these men, this motley group, this group of malcontents, you know, malcontents can, uh, tents are dissatisfied, rebellious people. You can't satisfy them to save your life. Misfits, persons who are not suited for the job. These were people who didn't fit anywhere else, and they came and they presented themselves to David. Now, what is interesting is this. Uh, he didn't look like a king. And they didn't look like warriors. Praise the Lord. They looked at him, and there he is dirty in a cave. He looked at them, and they, they, there they are, malcontents, misfits, a praise the Lord, a motley crew, a group of people that, that, uh, that, that you just can't do anything with. And they looked at him and said, we want you to be our king. We want you to be our captain. Now, now David knew warriors. David knew what soldiers looked like because David had commanded the elite fighting force of Saul. See, David knew about fighters and he knew that these men were not fighters. They were not warriors. But isn't it just like Jesus? The Lord stands, stood out one day and said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My brother, to the world, you might not look like much. Praise the Lord. To your neighbor, you may look like just an ordinary guy. Your track record may say that you are a misfit. That you, you, you may be in debt. Praise the Lord. Stressed out. And all of those other things. But if you get the anointing and you recognize the move of God. And then you're willing to press your way. Because they, they were pressers. They, they pressed their way into the cave of Dulem. They found David. Somebody shout, you got to find this. Some of us are waiting for everything to just drop in our lap. But you got to know how sometimes you got to go for God. You got to get on the altar. I'm waiting for the pastor to lay hands on him. And the Lord said, the Lord is telling me, don't touch him. Make him cry out for himself. If she don't ever come to the altar, don't call her. Because she don't want it yet. When you want it, when you want this thing, nobody can keep you from getting what you want from God. A presser will press their way. Somebody shout something and, and give the Lord a praise like you want it. Hallelujah. 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 Despite uh, his location, not the palace, but a king. Despite his situation on the run from the king, they saw the value in David. I wonder, do you still see value in holiness church? I wonder if you still see the value in clapping your hands. One of you still see the value in shouting before the Lord. One of you still see the value of uh, hooping and lifting up Jesus and preaching with power and authority. I know CCM is taking over and I know we're all laid back now, but I wonder if there anybody in here who still see the value of the Lord setting their soul on fire. Yes, sir. You ought to look at somebody and say, I see the value of this. This kind of service. They, 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 they saw the value in David, but David saw the value in them. Man, I told you in our little promo today that our presiding bishop says, uh, he always say, I see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now. You got to know how to look at that person. 
See, when you, when you get the Holy Ghost, you don't just see where people are. You see where they can be. You, you see where God wants to take them. You see why the devil is fighting them so hard. You see why the enemy is beating down on them. Any time you have a destiny, my Lord, the devil throws everything at you. Anytime you're on your way somewhere, you get hit with everything, including the kitchen sink. But tonight you ought to tell the devil, I recognize what you're doing and it ain't going to work because I am not going to give up. I'm going to be the person that the Lord saved me to be. I may stumble, I may fumble, I may drop the ball sometimes, but I'm still on my way. Hey God, somebody lift your hands and give God praises in here tonight. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you praise him in the building? So now here they are, good God almighty. David didn't look like a king and they didn't look like elite warriors. But I'm glad that more to be than what I look like. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I heard the Bible says, rejoice not my enemies against me when I fall, for I shall arise. One thing about God, he knows how to get you up from there if you want to get up. Well, these men, David began to train them. And as he began to work on them, See, the wonderful thing about serving the Lord uh, is that it's always a two-way street. You may, you may be hard, Brother Williams, for me to train. Mm-hmm. But if I hang in there with you, and if you hang in there with me, see, I don't know, maybe I think that you are hard to train. But maybe you may say to yourself, He's using the wrong methods. But if we keep on working together, I'll sharpen my skills and you'll become a better man. And I'll become a better man. See, these 400 men, they were training David to be the king. For if David could organize this motley crew, if David could make warriors out of these men, if you can take a distressed man, a man in debt, a complainer, a whiner, a good God of my, a misfit. Misfit by definition is the one who is not suitable to do the job. You ain't even suitable to be a warrior, but I'm gonna train you anyhow. Somebody ought to offer God their hands. You ought to offer God your mind. No, Lord, I'm not qualified. No, Lord, I'm not as talented as someone else, but I'll give you me. I'll give you who I am and I just believe you're able to make me who and what you'd have me to be. Say yeah! 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 Yeah, Lord! So David began to train these misfits and they began to work with David and now when we turn over to by the time we get to 2 Samuel chapter 22 They got a title now. They've gone from being misfits. They've gone from being malcontents. They're gone, praise the Lord, from being men who are complainers and murmurers. And they've gone to a new title. They're called mighty men. There are men and then there are mighty men. I wanna know brothers, do you wanna be a man? Or do you wanna be a mighty man? saints of God we can be people or we can be mighty people in God can I preach to the men for a minute since this is for the conference brothers for the next three nights we ought to let God work on us and make us mighty men I know we had problems when we came I know we messed up but you ought to let God work on you somebody throw your hands up and say work on me Lord work on me make me a mighty man we see David I'm getting ready to close here because I want to pray with these same men and it says these be the name of the mighty men whom David had the Tecmanite uh, that sat in the seat the chief among the captains he wasn't nothing when he met David 
He wasn't anything when he came to the cave. How many, how many can celebrate where the Lord has brought you from? How many can say I was nothing till Jesus got hold to me? Put me in the church. Follow the pastor working with leadership. Falling in line. I got on the usher board. I joined the Happy Warriors. I became an armor battle. I began to work in the church. Good God Almighty. And as I got busy, the Lord began to change me and make me better. Well, these men, he began to work with David. And the same was Adeno. Good God Almighty. The Ezite. And he lifted up his spear. Look at this. Against 800 men whom he slew at one time. He went from being an ordinary man to being a mighty warrior. Somebody ought to lift their hands and ask for that anointing. What well, God will give me power to slay the devil. What well, God will give me power to beat the opposition. I know that we have a lot of things going on in society. I know that we all have to deal with our 800 demons, our 800 devils, 800 situations that come our way. Sometimes they come one at a time. Sometimes they come all together. But with this anointing and with the word of God, with the sword in our hand, which is the word of God, we're able, somebody shout able, to overcome, say yeah, yeah. I just need a few folk to rejoice in Jesus. Rejoice in him. Hallelujah. And then he said, and after him was, was Eleazar, Lord have mercy, the son of the doe, the Ahohite, and one of the three mighty men of David. And when, look at this, and when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, it says, and the men of Israel had gone away, these three men were left. It says, uh, he arose and smote the Philistines. Watch this. Until this man got up and he smote the Philistines. He fought, he, I thought about it today, he fought until his hand got weary Allah him Allah till his hand got weary and his hand cleaved to the sword good God and he and the Lord wrote a great victory that day what am I saying when your best is not good enough God will anoint you to do what is required he got tired couldn't fight anymore but how many know that we serve a God who will give you a second win a third win he'll revive you in the midst of the fight he got tired but the Lord revived him somebody ought to tell him hallelujah find the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah find the glory Praise him for your revival. Hey! Revive! Revive! Lord, revive us again! The Lord! Hey! Woo! I want you to, I gotta close here. It's Thursday night. But I want you to look at your neighbor and just tell him, I, I was tired, I was weary, but I feel my helper now. I feel the Lord giving me power to keep on fighting. Power, oh, power, yeah, yeah, Lord. Ain't gonna give up. Not gonna 
gonna give up, not gonna wear out, not gonna throw in the tile. I'm gonna fight on, fight on. Uh -huh. Woo! Let me wrap this up here. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. I wanna just highlight this. But here's a story here. David, while he was in this cave, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, you'll find where David, while hung up in the cave, he said to the men, all that I had, a glass of water. All that I could get, just a little water to drink. Read it when you get home. 2 Samuel chapter 5, 18 and down. And when David was in the garrison of the Philistines, the good God Almighty, when the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem, verse 15 here of 2 Samuel 23, it says, and David longed and said, oh, that one would give me a drink of water out of the well of Bethlehem. Oh, Lord, which is by the gate. Now, he really wasn't asking for water. He really wasn't praying for water. Smith, and congratulations to you. They're engaged. They're getting ready to get married. But let me tell you what he was doing, Smith. He was just thinking out loud. He's in the hole. He's in the garrison. And he just said to himself, Boy, what I wouldn't give for a glass, a drink of water out of the wells of Bethlehem. But you see, when you got trained men around you, when you got mighty men who are fit for the task, you have to be careful what you ask for because they'll work hard to make it happen. The Bible said, and the three mighty men broke through the host of the Philistines. The Philistines had put their fort up. They put their garrison up. You couldn't get to the water. But David, three mighty men, said our leader won't water. They fought, broke their way through, got to the water, got a bucket, got a bucket of water, fought their way back and brought the water to David. David said, what are you doing? They said, you said you wanted water. Here's the water. When David understood that sacrifice, he said, I can't even drink this water. I'm gonna offer the water unto the Lord. The good God Almighty, mighty men, we make things happen. Mighty men, we fight till it happens. Mighty men, we break through, we pray through. Good God Almighty, I wanna hear some men give God a breakthrough praise. Want to hear some men cry out to him? Yeah! Ha. Woo! Hold on, Rafer. Let me just hear the brothers praise him. Woo! Hey! While you were praising the Lord, the Lord if you want a drink of water I'll get you your water whatever you want Lord whatever Woo. Hey. now everybody give him that kind of praise if I know that it's something glory 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 Glory, 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 glory. They went from being motley to mighty. They went from being malcontents. Guys who just complain. Don't nobody from the church call me. Pastor didn't return my call. Brothers don't check on me. Nobody cares about me. Woe is me. All that to being men whose arm became one with the sword. To being men who could destroy 800 
at a time to being men who could fight through and destroy the enemy. And when you read about the exploits of these men, I wasn't able to cover it all. You will see that they did extraordinary things. They went from being malcontents to being mighty. They went from being uh, misfits. Men who, Tony, wasn't fit for the task. Didn't fit the mold. Wouldn't look at you and pick. You wouldn't be the one they would pick. But you know what God does? God picks the ones. That's the way the Lord is. He, he, he picks the ones that others overlook. God picks the worst speaker to be the world's greatest spokesman. For who was a greater spokesman than Moses? Yet Moses had a speech impediment. God Almighty. We learned the other day through study that the woman who tells us about the virtuous woman, if Lemuel was indeed Solomon, Solomon's mother was Bathsheba. So God takes a woman who was in an adulterous relationship with King David and uses her to describe the Proverbs 31 woman. Isn't it just like God? He takes the man who wrote havoc on the church, Saul, and makes him the greatest warrior for the church. Then he takes losers like me and gives me an anointing and gives me power to preach the gospel. Let me tell you something tonight. There's a transference in the house. There's a move of God right now for every man who wants it, for every woman who wants it, who says, God, I want this thing on me. God, I want my anointing. I want to move in the area of the mighty. I don't want to be ordinary. I want to be mighty. I want to be mighty. God, I want to do exploits for you. I want to do extraordinary things. I want to witness in my neighborhood. I want to, I want to share the truth. I recognize the value of the opportunity that I have. And I want to take advantage of it. Oh, God. Oh, God, I, I've been on the level that I'm where I am long enough. I, I've been this kind of man long enough. God, I want to be a better man. I've been, I've been one of the men who showed up at first long enough. And out of those 400, the mighty men were divided into captains. And in all, listen, this is why this thing is for the desperate. Right. It ain't for everybody. That's right. Out of the 400, these mighty men made up about 30. See, the anointing is not really for everybody. Mother, that's what we tell them. The anointing of God is for everybody. It's really not. The anointing of God is for everybody who wants it. That's who, the, that's who the anointing is for. See, it's for who wants it. Now, if you don't want to be anointed, he won't make, he won't just come upon you and take you over. If you were one of those guys, well, I, you know, I, I, I'm just going to stand here. I'm going to be cool, calm, and collected because I don't want anybody to see me just going for God. I mean, that's your thing. I mean, it's all right with me. You just ain't going to get this kind of anointing. But you can but if you don't, then don't hold it against the brother who went for it and got it. And then the Lord began to anoint him to do exploits. Now you resent him for the exploits that's taking place in his life when you could have had him also, but you wouldn't go. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stone them that was sent for thee. How often would I have gathered you to myself as a hen doth gather her chickens, but you wouldn't come. You wouldn't participate. Then he did, you know what he said? Now your house, he walked out the temple. Now your house is left desolate. And you know what? He never went back in the temple. And then when he died, guess what? He said, you know, I left something there. I left something in the temple. Well, he left, but he left something there. He left the glory. So 
So when Jesus died, the, the veil of the temple was ripped in twain from the top to the bottom. That was God the Father whipping the veil and took the anointing out of there too. See, you got to get this thing while the getting is good. You got, you got to take what God is handing out while God's handing it out. Well, I got time. I can wait three years from now. The train will have left the temple, the station. Gone and it ain't coming back. Ready to pray? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, tonight. Just begin to give him praise. We thank you, Lord, tonight. We thank you, Lord, tonight. We thank you tonight, Lord. We thank you for where we are. But we thank you even more for where we're headed. Tonight, oh God, let me tell you, the Lord spoke to me last week. I said, God, what you want me to preach uh, Thursday night for the men? God said, preach those mighty men. Tell them what I've said. The Lord, I told you the other day I got a message. He'd already given it to me. Praise God. I came over here and worked it out. And he already told me what to tell the church. And this is for the men, but it's for the saints. It's a, I don't want any lady to say, this is not, I can't get into this. Yes, you can. If you want to go from one place in God to the next, let's cry out to him. And, and, we're, and we're not going to cry long because my time is up. I've, I've, I've preached fast. And uh, uh, Father, tonight we come before you. We come before you tonight. Thankful for what you've done. But we've been where we are long enough. And the reason we know that we've been where we are in you long enough is that you're calling us higher. You're anointing us to go to another place in you. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you tonight for all of these men. I thank you for the 400. I thank you for the family. And Father, for tonight, we're not the upper room but we're in the cave of Dulem and we've joined together in the cave and father I'm proud I'm honored to be the captain of this army but father we want to go from being a bunch of misfits to being mighty in you tonight Lord Feel us with the Holy Ghost. Lord, heal. Lord, deliver. Lord, revive. Lord, do it again. Lord, save us. Wash us again, Lord. Lord, we want to be men of God. Holy men, family men, examples in our home, in the community, in the church. Lord, make us churchmen. Lord, oh, an honest Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Break every yoke. Break every chain. Break every yoke. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody's crying out to him. Somebody want to be. Somebody wants to be all that he wants us to be. The anointing is being released. The anointing is being released in the room right now. In the room right now. Touching man, touching this guy, touching that guy, touching this girl, touching that girl. Move, Lord. Move, Lord. You got to recognize the value of it and press your way. Press, 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 press in, press in, press on, press, been on this level long enough want to be the man you'd have me to be 
Oh God, oh God, Jesus, do it again. Do it in my home, do it in my family, do it in me. Jesus, I've been on this level long enough. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way. Woo! Good God Almighty, have your way, Lord. Bless this preacher, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless this preacher, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let the Lord have your way. That's right. In the name of Jesus, do it in me, Lord. 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 I'm going to be mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not going to let life wear me down. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, anoint me afresh. Jesus, anoint me afresh. Anoint me again. In the name of Jesus, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, deliver this man. Break every yoke, old and new. Break every yoke. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, we declare, Satan, you can't have him. We declare, devil, he's not yours, but he belongs to Jesus. Jesus, ah, Jesus, ah, Jesus. Break, 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 break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody give God. Give him your fighting arm. Give him your fighting arm. Give him your fighting arm. Let him anoint it. Let him anoint it. Let him anoint it. Let him anoint it. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. I'm not getting tired. I'm revived. I'm revived. I'm revived. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint me, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I can do this. I can handle this. I can beat my 800. I can win. I stand for Tasha. I stand for myself. 800 has come after me. But as I stand on the Word of God, the anointing of the Technohyte is coming upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody begin to leap up and down and shout, I can do this. I can do this. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do this. I can. 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 somebody just pair off tonight I don't actually do this often but pair off get your prayer partner get your prayer, prayer partner hallelujah pray that God and I want you to I want you to pour out your heart to God for the person that you're praying for I want you to lay hands on them and all that I just want you to hold hands and just pray for them Good God, I'm gonna ask God to make them mighty. Ask the God to open their eyes that they might see the value of this kind of church. Open their eyes that they may see the value of calling on your name. Open their eyes. Oh Lord, hallelujah, misfit no more malcontent no more distress no more discomforted no more in debt no more Tea. 
baby land You ought to cry mighty I'm God's mighty man uh, You're God's mighty woman Mighty Yeah, Lord He's giving me power to achieve power to walk right power to live holy power to be somebody power to be a good husband power to be a good wife power power I ain't gonna hold you any longer. I just heard God, the Holy Spirit, told me to tell you to confess something tonight. I want you to confess it three times. Like the beast, uh, the, the seraphim said, holy, holy, holy. Uh, then I want you to, you know, and uh, when you study what God told him, uh, uh, Joshua, he told him three times, be strong. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Good God Almighty. There's a trinity in there somewhere. But I want you to just shout three times, mighty. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Mighty! mighty. Woo! Come on, let's pray. Praise him tonight like we're in a conference. Green, do you believe him tonight? Did you get what God, you're on your journey. He'll take you from where you are to being a mighty man of God, but you can't give up. The road might be a little tough, but stay on the road. Somebody high five him and tell him stay on the road. Sister Courtney, hallelujah. The going might get a little rough, but stay on the road. Stay on the road. Don't you get off that road. Don't you, don't, don't you. Tell your neighbor, don't you, don't, don't you get off the road. Stay on the road. <laughs> 